So we've looked at using variables to store values of different types, so floating point numbers, integers, strings, etc. But sometimes you might have a program that has collections of similar things. So you might have a multiple player game, for example, and each player would have a score and a number of lives possibly, or each ball in the game would have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And you want to treat those all with consistent code and treat them all in a like manner. So what you want is probably an array. So an array is a collection of variables um, which we access with a number so they all have the same name but they have a different um, index so let's have a look at how you might create those so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little program that creates um, a set of random numbers that you might use for choosing your lottery ticket for example so the first thing I need to do is declare my uh, array so we use dim just as we use with a single variable and then we need to think of a name for it so if I'm creating a uh, set of balls, uh, I'm going to call it ball. So you could go for plural, but the reason I've just called it ball is because once we add the number on, I'm going to get sort of ball one, ball three, etc. So I think it's probably nicer to say it like that. So ball, and then in brackets, we say the highest um, index value that we want to use. Now we start counting at zero. So if I want six balls, that's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, so the highest um, index, the highest number is going to be 5, having started at 0. And then we say as, uh, and then we say integer. So the, the rest of it is like it is if we're declaring an individual value. Now, you might be thinking, well, OK, it might not hurt to just um, add a little bit extra to that uh, highest index so I don't run out because if you try and add a ball 6 for example in this case I will get an error however it depends what you want to do with that array so if you want to sort that array for example having empty elements at the end of your array can cause problems when you sort them because those empty values will be sorted into the list so it's better to get that um, maximum index right if you can and then um, what, what you can also do is um, you can do, so you can do this kind of thing. So I've, that's created a set of six balls, 0 to 5, and said they're all integers. So one of the things about an array, um, particularly if you come from Python with things like lists, is they all have the same type. So every, every ball is an integer. Uh, also, um, you don't have to uh, store the values in the correct order. So you don't have to store 0, 1 first, uh, 0 first, and then 1, and then 2, up to 5. You can you can uh, store ball five first. So um, I'm just going to have a um, another integer as well, which I'm going to use as a loop counter. So we'll come back to that uh, in a second. So I can set uh, an individual value uh, by saying things like this. So I could say ball zero. So that's giving me a set of six balls, ball zero to ball um, five. But other than that, they behave exactly uh, as ordinary variables. So I can say ball zero is one two three and I can say things like ball um, zero equals ball zero plus one so I can add one to it so if it was a score for example or if it was a, an x or y coordinate of something I can add one to it and move it to the right uh, or up um, and I can also print the value so if I print the value of this so I can say console uh, dot right line and I'm going to say ball zero so I can pick out individual values so if I run this program now what it should print is 124 because I've set the value of ball zero I've added one to ball zero and now I'm printing ball zero so there we go that's my 124 because it started off as 123 and I added one and it wouldn't matter as I said you can you can do them in any order so if I did, if I did that same thing with five as long as I was consistent um, I could mix the numbers obviously if I wanted ball 5 to be 1 more than ball 4 um, I could just do this but in this case we're dealing with the same um, ball all the way through and uh, so that will give me exactly the same result so that's not particularly useful as it is at the moment um, where it comes into its own is if I want to do the same thing to all of these balls because what I can do then is I can use um, something like uh, a for loop so I can say for um, b uh, equals 1 to, no, I need to start at 0, I don't have 0 to 5. Um, and then I'm going to say ball B. 
So as I loop through this uh, for loop, the value of b is going to change. It will be 0 the first time, then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So each time I go around the loop, I'll set a different value within the array. And I'm just going to say uh, int rand um, times. So the, if these are lottery balls, so um, I'm going to say uh, that. So there's a separate video on how to scale uh, random numbers. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, well, what we can also do with an array is we can uh, sort it. So um, if I wanted to sort those numbers into order, well, in fact, let's leave that first. What I'm going to do then is, so I've looped through and I've set the value of each of those. So I could print those as I go along. So let's have, um, let's just say um, console dot so I'm not going to loop around again at the moment uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to print ball um, B so I print the current ball and then just uh, put a space on them to space them out so I'm using console dot write they'll all appear on the same line so if I run my program now I can, we can see we've got our numbers they're 32 27 29 15 15 and 38 Okay, so if I was doing this for real, I'd need to add a bit of extra code to make sure that I haven't got any duplicates. So each time I pick a ball, I'd have to go back through the ones that I'd already picked. So I'd use a nested loop um, to uh, check that I haven't picked it already. And there's a separate video on nested loops. Um, so what I can then do is I can, um, when you, if you've ever seen the lottery results program, they display the, the numbers in order. So there is... Um, an action that we can take so array dot sort and uh, so ball so we don't need an index there because we want to sort the whole thing and now if I uh, if we, we need to we could loop through it again so for b equals naught to five then we're just going to in fact it's the same same as that um, so if I run this now what this is going to do is going to loop through the sorted array and we can see that it has actually put it into order. So the first uh, six numbers will be the original array and then the next six are the sorted. So 15, 15, 27, 29, 35, etc. in order. Now what Visual Basic does is it, um, it seems to give you the same numbers every time but if we uh, put randomize at the top, uh, hopefully that should give me a different set of numbers this time. So you can see it's the second half of the list. In fact, what I could do is um, I could have put another right line uh, or something in there to start a new line, but you get the idea. So we can generate things, and if I wanted to do anything with those, so checking them, for example, for duplicates, or if I wanted to square them or round them off, I can loop through the whole set of uh, values in the array and treat them in a consistent way. So that's much easier than having separate variables called ball1 without the brackets, ball2, etc. because um, we'd have to write separate code rather than being able to loop. And also, um, if we... Um, If we want to do some comparison, um, if we sort them into order, so there's a, um, an OCR um, task, for example, where you take three sides of a triangle and you, you, need to, you need to say whether it's a valid triangle or whether it's equilateral, for example, or whether it's a right angle triangle. If you sort them into order, if you store those values in an array and sort them into order, that'll help you do the comparisons because you know that all three um, sides are the same. If the first one and the last one are the same, you don't need to worry about the middle one once they're in order. So sorting is also quite useful. Uh, so that's one use of um, arrays, which is for collections of kind of like things. Another um, useful use of arrays is for kind of lookup. So when we're generating random numbers, and again there's a separate video on generating random numbers, uh, we can generate a random number, but we can't generate a random thing so easily. So what about if you wanted to generate um, a random day of the week, for example, or you wanted to pick a random person from the class? Well, what we can do is we can do this. We could say dim uh, week as, so string this time. So we've got uh, an array of strings, and obviously there's seven days, so we're going to go up to six. You could do something like this. You could say week uh, zero equals 
Sunday, etc. So you could go through and you could define the values uh, one at a time, and you could say week one is Monday, week two is Tuesday, etc. But another thing that you can do is uh, you can say this. So you can say dim week equals, so it's slightly a different syntax, but you can say week equals new string. And then inside uh, curly brackets, you can put the values. So you can create your um, array and stick the values straight in. So you could do this. So you could say Sunday, uh, Monday, not Mujan Day, so Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we've got all the days of the week there in an array. And obviously, um, so that'll begin at zero. So if I do this, for example, if I say console.writeline uh, week zero for example and I run that and I press the right key it's saying Sunday so week zero is Monday week one sorry Sunday week one is Monday week two is Tuesday etc but what about if I want to pick one of those at random well what I'll also need is uh, an index so I'm going to call it, I'll just call that i. Um, so dim i as integer. And again, I'm going to, there's going to be a separate video on scaling random numbers, but I'm just going to say i equals, um, I'm going to say int r and d uh, times, so you multiply by the number of values you want. So there's seven uh, possible values. And just so that I get a different day of the week each time rather than the same one. I'm going to randomize at the start. So what I'm going to do is I've generated my random number which will be from 0 to 6 and then I'm going to use that random number as a uh, an index into the array. So I'm going to print so console.writeline I'm going to print week and then I'm going to use i as my index. So i is a random number so each time I run my program now, it should give me um, a different day. Well, a random day of the week. It won't give me a different one because it's only seven, aren't there? So that's given me Wednesday. If I run it again, it's given me Monday. So if I do right line, um, hopefully a bit clearer. There you go, Saturday. And obviously, I can use that um, technique for all sorts of uh, random things. Uh, and it, right, it doesn't have to be random. So um, there's an example in another video of me um, printing the lyrics to the 12 days of Christmas. So if you had an array of presents, so you know, present the first present would be the partridge in the pear tree, and then you know other, other presents up to uh, through the lords are leaping and the maids are milking, etc. And then you can just loop from uh, one to 12 and you can look up what the present is on that day. So you can look up all sorts of things as well as um, just using um, randomness. It's also useful for things like, so if you're counting, obviously uh, if you've got a, a for loop and you count from one to 10, it's gonna give you um, you know, uh, just a number one to 10. But if you want to turn that into first, second, third, fourth, then you can have an array of ordinal numbers as well. So that's a very useful technique. And in fact, in some ways, you might use that more than um, the first example, which was for collections of like things. So that's a quick look at arrays. Arrays are collections of variables which you access with an index. So they've got all, the same, all got the same name, but you add a number to say which one you want. Uh, they're all of the same type but you can, um, you can set them in, in any order. So you can work backwards through the list or uh, add them at random times. And uh, you can then loop through them all and treat them in a consistent way. Or you can use an array for lookup as well.